Major discoveries about the development of the multiverse are still being made thanks to the James Webb Space Telescope. A mystery planet in the habitable region of its star Proxima Centauri resides amid the vastness of space. This planet is the Earth's cousin, so it's not just any old rock. And just now, Proxima b has been revealed in the finest image yet taken by the JWST, showing astounding details about this potentially habitable exoplanet. What riddles about Proxima b has the JWST unlocked? Let's find out. The James Webb Telescope is outfitted with increasingly powerful and sensitive tools that enable it to probe the past of the universe and discover more about the universe's creation, the stars, planets, and life. It is actually conceivable to look back billions of years and obtain a glimpse of how galaxies formed over the course of the universe if we apply that principle to the furthest reaches of space. The infrared images captured by JWST are unlike anything human eyes can see. What the JWST can do depends on how it is utilized, such as with a camera and a certain filter, like you might do, say, with a Snapchat filter on your phone. Using JWST, we may gather a specific range of light colors, take a picture of those colors, and then analyze those hues. Just like the white light we see when we look at the sun, which actually contains every color of the rainbow. The James Webb Telescope's study of the early cosmos will aid in our understanding of how galaxies, stars and planets are born. Also, the telescope will investigate the atmospheres of planets outside of our solar system and search for indications of extraterrestrial life. Because of its amazing capacity to peer further into the past in both time and space than ever before, the James Webb Space Telescope continues to highlight the most important findings on the evolution of the cosmos. More mass than was previously believed to exist in the entire universe has now been found in a number of very big galaxies. Alpha Centauri, the next nearest star, is around four light years away. Therefore, our observation of it is four years out of date. After spotting hints of such disruption in 2013, Astronomers spent years searching for signs of the tiny gravitational tug exerted by a planet on its star. The planet was eventually named Proxima b. The binary star system of Alpha Centauri, which the Proxima star is assumed to loosely circle, is 4.25 light-years away from Earth, placing Proxima Centauri significantly closer. The team estimates that the planet is about 30% more massive than Earth, though it may be larger. Its year only lasts 11.2 Earth days because it orbits the star at a distance of 7.3 million kilometers, less than 5% of the distance between Earth and the Sun. One might assume that a planet's surface would be scorched by such a close orbit. Proxima Centauri, on the other hand, is a tiny red dwarf star that radiates far less brightly than the Sun. On the surface of the planet, the star would look like a dull red orb that was roughly three times as big as the Sun as seen from Earth. The planet is therefore in the habitable region of its star, and its surface temperature may be suitable for supporting liquid water. Now, hold off on packing your interplanetary bags for the moment. This extraterrestrial environment is surely not at all comfortable. The planet's rocky surface, similar mass to Earth and temperate climate, are all favorable for life. Proxima b, however, is not a second Earth. What might life on the Earth-like planet Proxima be like, according to Stephen Baxter's science fiction? There are no other parallels. Even the surface temperature, which may be as low as minus 33 degrees Celsius or as high as the high hundreds, is not entirely definite. Just the typical temperature. The same face of Proxima b, on the other hand, is likely tidally locked with its star, pointing in the same direction all the time. As a result, one half of the world is always in the day, while the other is always in the night. That doesn't seem very Earth-like. Any water that comes too close to the star will be boiled away by the powerful radiation. If a planet is too far from a star, it won't receive enough heat and all of its water will simply freeze. Because those regions have the best chances of hosting life as we know it, astronomers are particularly interested in them. 
so it is understandable why astronomers are so fascinated by Proxima b. It may be difficult for any life that may exist on that planet, which is unfortunate. Red dwarf Proxima Centauri has only a small portion of the mass of the Sun. Red dwarf stars have nuclear fusion cores that are much closer to their surfaces due to their small size. Compared to stars like the Sun, this causes their surfaces to be far more chaotic and the resulting increase in turbulence amplifies extremely powerful magnetic fields. The resultant powerful high-energy radiation and particle bursts into the surrounding system are made possible by those strong magnetic fields. This is not a significant issue when you are sufficiently far from a star. Yet the habitable zones of stars like Proxima Centauri are much closer since they aren't nearly as bright as the Sun. It's close enough that the phrase habitable might be overused. Although scientists were already aware that life on Proxima b would be extremely challenging, they were forced to make do with studies of nearby stars because they were unaware of the precise magnetic field conditions around Proxima Centauri. A new study used high-resolution magnetic field maps of Proxima Centauri to create a model of the star's solar wind. They discovered that the situation is just as dire as we had anticipated after receiving more reliable information. Proxima b receives roughly 1,000 times as much solar wind radiation as the Earth does in total. In fact, a Proxima Centauri flare in April 2021 was 100 times more powerful than any sun-related flare ever observed. Any life on the planets close to the star would be at risk from flares like this one. It's doubtful that people could ever survive on Proxima Centauri b without specialized shelter. Many individuals continue to be optimistic about finding life in the Alpha Centauri system. In late 2020, this was strengthened. The finding of a peculiar signal that might have originated from this system was the root of the problem. Although the signal was actually received in April 2019, it took more than a year for anyone to discover it. What is interesting about the signal? It read at 982.002 MHz. It is unusual for signals from Earth-based satellites and spacecraft to occupy this frequency. This increased the researchers' interest in the signal source. The origin of the signal is still unknown. Experts cautioned that it most likely wasn't an alien life form, though. The signal was probably brought on by a piece of manufactured equipment. Others continue to harbor the dream that the signal might be proof of intelligent life. What do you think? Would you like to encounter aliens from the nearest planet to our solar system? Maybe it would be better for you to get to Proxima Centauri b on your own. What is the best way to reach the Proxima Centauri system? Even the closest stars will take hundreds of years for humanity's fastest spacecraft to approach. In order to potentially allow the scientists who launched the mission to live to witness the results, the breakthrough initiatives have been looking at the prospect of cutting this to decades. In a recent work published in the Journal of the Optical Society of America B, the authors agree that the challenges still need to be addressed, but they demonstrate how one of the fundamental challenges for such a project may be overcome using current technology. The difficulty of accelerating an object increases with its mass, especially as one approaches the speed of light, which poses a significant challenge for any spaceship carrying its own fuel. The closest star and planetary system to Earth is Alpha Centauri. However, using current technology, it would take a person about 6,000 years to travel there. Although the concept of utilizing lasers to deliver this push has been around for a while, Breakthrough Starshot is now giving it more serious consideration. Doing this work presents several difficulties, but according to Bandutunga, one of them need not be the environment. We are reminded of how greatly the atmosphere affects incoming light through the twinkling of the stars. The same distortions also influence laser light directed upward, which may make it difficult for lasers to exert the necessary force to propel a spacecraft forward. The launch device may be placed on the moon, according to some supporters of the notion, but the cost would be, well, astronomical. The paper's first author, Bandutunga, claims that the adaptive optics which telescopes employ to correct for atmospheric distortion 
may also be utilized in reverse. Small lasers mounted on satellites can be used to assess atmospheric effects in real time, which enables much more powerful lasers on the ground to adjust and maintain a tight focus on the space probe. The phrase vastly more powerful is accurate. According to earlier studies, these lasers need 100 gigawatts of power to send to the vessel. At any given time, the entire United States consumes 450 gigawatts of electricity. Bandutunga and his writing partner, Dr. Paul Sibley, are unfazed. They claim that it just needs to run for 10 minutes at a maximum capacity. Hence, we picture a battery or a system of supercapacitors that can abruptly unleash energy that has been accumulated over several days. 100 million lasers would be used to disperse the electricity across a kilometer square region. By the time the lasers are turned off, the objects would be moving at around 20% of the speed of light and would be a little larger than 10 meters or 33 feet across. The craft could travel to Alpha Centauri in around 22 years, provided the sun's gravity and the interstellar medium did not considerably slow it down. However, it would take another four years for its transmissions to reach Earth. Bandutunga and Sibley recognize that keeping the probe from melting is definitely one of the remaining huge challenges. To prevent this, the mirror must be practically perfect, reflecting 99.99% of the light that strikes it and doubling momentum transfer while decreasing heat. In a matter of days, a probe would traverse the Alpha Centauri system, probably never getting very close to a planet. The appeal of the concept is that once the launch system is in place, adding more probes may be sent for a reasonable price. The likelihood that someone will obtain a close, if fleeting, look at any Earth-like planets is increased if a fleet of probes floods adjacent star systems. But after they arrived at Proxima Centauri, mankind would have an entire star system to explore. How many additional planets like our own might there be? Exoplanets are planets outside of our solar system, and thousands of them have already been discovered. In 1992, scientists made the first official findings when they discovered planets circling a particular class of neutron star called a pulsar. In 1995, the first planet revolving around a star similar to the Sun was found. Since then, numerous additional planets have been discovered, including several Earth-sized worlds within the habitable zones of their stars, thanks to missions like the JWST, Kepler Space Observatory, and ground-based studies. But that is only the very beginning. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.